OK, so now we're going to do a quick example of drawing some box plots. Um, I'm just going to go straight in with this data and try and drawing the box plot. So the smallest values are 0 and 3, and you'll see why I've got two smallest values here. The largest values are 21 and 27. They've told me the lower quartile, the median, and they've told me the interquartile range. So they haven't given me everything I need, but they've given me lots. And it says draw a box plot to represent the above data, showing any outliers. Okay, I think that's why they've given two for both of these. You're going to identify the outliers using 1.5 multiplied by the interquartile range above or below the quartiles. So I actually think one of the things I am missing from here is what the upper quartile is. I want you to think to yourself, how could you find out what the upper quartile is? Well, I know what the lower quartile is. I know what the median is. And I know what the interquartile range is. Ah, I think this is probably going to be the most useful one because the interquartile range is the upper quartile take away the lower quartile. So that looks to me like the interquartile range plus the lower quartile will give me the upper quartile. So I'm just going to add in that the upper quartile here is just going to be the interquartile range, which is 6, plus the lower quartile, which is 8, and 6 plus 8 is 14. OK, now let's see if we can do any of the boundaries before we actually can draw it. So I'm going to do uh, Q1 minus 1.5 times the interquartile range for the lower. So that's going to be the lower quartile, which is 8 minus 1.5 times 6. 8 minus 1.5 times 6, so that's minus 1. So I've got no outliers down there. And now I'm going to do the upper. So I'm going to do Q3 plus 1.5 times the interquartile range. So Q3 we've worked out is 14, and I'm going to add on 1.5 times 6. Which is 23. So this gives 27 as an outlier. And here is where things get a little bit different. I've got a couple of ways about what we can do. When there's an outlier at one end, there's two allowable places to put the end of the whisker or the line. You can either put it at the maximum value that is not an outlier, or you can put it at the outlier boundary. I will do both of these, and I personally prefer the maximum value that is not an outlier, but I will show you how you can do both of them. So I'm going to draw the box plot now. And for this box plot, I'll do it in this um, red color I've got here. I'm going to put in the smallest value. And the smallest value is 0. I don't need to put in the 3 because the 3 um, isn't an outline, nor is the 0. Now I'm going to start drawing the box. And the box goes from the lower quartile, which is at 8. And then I go up to the median, which is 10. And then I go up to the upper quartile, which is 14. And I'm going to just join that together to make a box. Now I'm going to go up to, for the first one, I'm going to go up to the maximum value that is not an outlier. So 27 was an outlier, so I'm just going to go up to 21 now. And then I'm going to join this together in the way that we should. I'm going to join this to this, and I'm going to join this to this. And I'm going to mark on that my 27 was an outlier. So 27 is going to be over here, and I'm going to mark it as an outlier. So that's the one that I've just done in my green highlight. If I wanted to, I could have marked the top end of this bit in a slightly different way. I could have done it, and I'll do it in a blue to represent I'm going to do the outlier boundary. The outlier boundary is 23. So what I could have done is I could have put it up to 23, like this. And I could have had it coming all the way from here up to this point. So either of those two would be accepted. Personally, I prefer the one that's in green. So I like this bit that I've done up to this point. But you could draw the end of the line up. Instead of it going up to the 21, you could do it going up to the outlier boundary. So here's one for you to have a quick go at. I'm going to draw it really quick in just a second. Um, and then you can see if you get the same answer as me. So it says, over a long period of time, a small company recorded the amount it received in sales per month, and the results are summarised below. So you've got your two lowest values, your lower, your median, your upper quartile, and your two highest values. We've got the standard definition of what the outliers are, and on this graph paper, we're going to draw the box plot, indicating clearly any outliers. 
So some quick calculations, I'm going to find out the interquartile range. So it's the upper take away the lower quartile. It's 14 take away 7, which is 7. So for my lower boundary, I'm going to do Q1 minus 1.5 times the interquartile range. So that's 7 minus 1.5 times 7, which is just going to be minus 3.5. So there's no outliers there. Now we'll do the upper. So the upper is going to be Q3 plus 1.5 times the interquartile range. So Q3 is 14. And I'm going to add on 1.5 lots of 7. So that's 14 plus 1.5 lots of 7, which is 24.5. 24.5. So 25 is an outlier. That's an outlier that we've got there. So I'm now going to just put this onto my box plot below. So my two lowest values are three and four. So I'm actually just going to be including the three as my lowest value. My lower quartile is seven. My median is 12. My upper quartile is 14. And I'm now going to put in, I'm going to, I prefer to put in just the next one rather than the 24.5 boundary. So I'm going to go with 20. Whoops, I need to get it on the correct mode of drawing. I'm going to join the middle bit together as a box. And I'm going to join those maximum and minimum lines back to the box. And don't forget to add in the outlier, which is at 25. OK, let's see the next bit. It says that the company claims that for 75% of the months, the amount received per month is greater than 10,000. Comment on this claim, giving a reason for your answer. So first of all, all of these things are in thousands of pounds. So the 10,000 pound mark is down here. Now, they've said that 75% of the months get 75% uh, of the months, the amount received per month is greater than 10,000. But remember what we said before, this section here is 25%. This section here is 25%. And this section here is 25%. So they're not right. They're saying that 75% of the months is greater than 10,000. But I think 75% of the months is greater than 7,000. So I would say the claim is wrong. Or the claim is incorrect. 75% of the months the amount received is greater than 7,000, not 10,000. Let's see if we got this right. Oh, I haven't got the mark scheme for that, but that's fine. We have got that right. Something else you need to be able to do with box plots is you need to be able to compare them. What I've written here is that when you're making comparisons, you need to do two things. And this isn't just for box plots, this is for all data. You need to include some comparison of spread and you need to include some measure of location. And usually it's best to just compare the median. So for the measure of spread, you're either going to be doing the interquartile range or the range. And then for the measure of location, I want to have a look at the median. To make sure that you get these marks, you need to write about it in the context in context of the question. Sorry, this should say write about it in context of the question. So we've got these box plots comparing the house prices of Croydon and Kingston upon Thames. This one is Croydon and this one is Kingston. And it says compare the prices of houses in Croydon with those in Kingston. So you would get one mark for a measure of spread and you've got a choice. Do you want to compare the length of the entire box plot, which is the range? or just the middle box, which is the interquartile range. So I'm going to compare the interquartile range. So I would say here, for a measure of spread, the interquartile range for Kingston is larger than Croydon. So here comes the context bit. The house prices in Kingston are more spread out. So there's my measure of spread. I'm now going to do a measure of location. I'm going to say the median, and I'm going to go straight in with the context, the median house price 
in hmm, which is the median that's got higher the median house price in kingston is higher than the than in, in croydon the median house price in kingston is higher than in croydon so i'm just going to highlight the bit that's in context here the house prices in kingston more spread out the median house price in Kingston is higher than Croydon, which I guess means on average, the higher the, sorry, the, on average, the house prices in Kingston are higher than in Croydon. So that's enough to be able to do exercise 3A and 3B, but I've got a couple of extra questions that you might like to try out here, which I've also got in the PDF in the booklet. So you've got this question where you could pause it and have a go. And you've got this question here, where you can pause it and have a go. And there's the mark scheme for this one as well. Okay.